Khe means Avakash or sky and Chara means who can travel. Who can travel in the air, they used to know as a Khechari. So Putana, she had that perfection that she used to travel in the air. Nowadays you need aeroplanes, then you can travel in the air. But here, Putana with her own will, she used to travel anywhere. And that's why she is to known as a Khechari also. And she was a such a cruel human as that she used to kill small babies specifically. And she used to eat their flesh, drink their blood. And when Lord Krishna was born there in Vrindavan, When he was staying in Mathura and Vasudev, when he shifted him to Gopal Mahavan, that time that had Kamsa specifically sent. Uh, to kill Krishna and she was traveling everywhere and she was she was so puffed up that she used to has a pride of her, her own activities that she used to kill so many small kids small children that she took a challenge from Kansa to kill his enemy Krishna so She came to Nanda Maharaja's place and she disguised herself as a very beautiful woman and she reached there. And most of the coward women, they thought that she must be from some heavenly planet, that she has come to bless our Krishna. Few of them, they thought that she must be none other than the goddess of fortune who has come to bless Krishna. So without any hindrance, she entered into Nanda Maharaja's place and she looked at Krishna in the cradle. She saw such a wonderful baby and she felt some motherly affection. And by seeing that affection, but her intention was bad, so Krishna closed his eyes. Never wanted to see her. Then she picked him up and she asked Yashoda Maya, can I breastfeed him? Then Yashoda Maya, mother was very pleased because she thought that this heavenly damsel, she has come to feed my child. So she gave it to him, gave it to her. And she carried Lord Krishna in a private place so that she can sit there and feed. Actually, she anointed her breast with a very dangerous poison. Her plan was, in pretension of feeding milk to Krishna, she will feed this poison and kill Krishna. But Lord, being a Agati the Ghatana Pati, you see, what he did, with the milk from her breast, Lord sucked out her life energy also. And Putana started crying like a hell. And she left that disguise form and she came into her original form. And she started beating her chairs. She was yelling. She wanted to get rid of Krishna because she came to know that her life here is going to get sucked by Krishna. And ultimately, when Krishna took her out, her prana, she fell down dead. And it is explained in Srimad Bhagavatam, she was 80 miles long. When she fell on the ground, all the Brajavasis, they came and they saw, what is this? What the hell? Such a big demon is. 
and just she came to kill Krishna. And they were thinking that it's Lord Narayana who has saved our Krishna. And they took Krishna immediately. And as they do in India, they take out the evil eye. Then they started doing that. They started putting uh, Gomutra and Gobar on the different parts of the different body parts of Krishna and they were wanted to protect him from another evil. But Lord Krishna, whether he is a child or whether he is in his own any form, he is Lord Himself. Our Acharyas they say this Putana demon is she represents two things. First thing, Putna represents that is pseudo guru. And second thing, the inwardly manifest spiritual guide in the form of the mundane empiric reasoning faculty, the material mind, is also like a Putana. Bhakti Vinod Thakur, he gives elaborate description of, descriptions about that. Generally, the bogus gurus, what they do, it is explained, that sometimes some people they claim themselves as a spiritual master and they guide their disciples in totally different way which they never practice in their life they never put it into their life they try to teach their disciples like a putana she came in disguise of a mother but her intention was to kill Krishna. Like that, there are some spiritual leaders, so-called, who claims themselves to be a spiritual master or leaders who can lead the others in their spiritual life, but they don't practice that. So these people are considered as a putana. And second, our materialistic mind, that is also considered as a putana. Because of mind has two things, sankalpa and vikalpa. It makes you think something and act accordingly. And sometimes it accepts some things and it rejects some things. So most of the time when mind rejects the spiritual order or the spiritual knowledge, then that mind which has a materialistic reasoning is known as a Putra. And that only can be vanquished by Krishna himself. So Putana is there and that should be get killed by Krishna only. Then Keshri, when we go further, Actually, in Bhakti Vinod Thakur, in his writings, he writes that in order to show mercy to his devotees, Krishna sucks the life out of a Putana's breast to protect his own innocent ecstasy, which has arisen within the young devotee's heart. And about her identity, it is explained in Garaga Samhita that, uh, and Brahma Vaivarat Puran also, that she was Ratnamala, the younger sister of Maharaj Bali. And Garga Samhita says that she was the daughter of Maharaj Bali. And when Bhamanadev, he came in that small drop, Bhaman, Brahmana's form, she got attracted towards him and she thought she had some parental affection for him and she was thinking that I would have been such a, I would have such a nice son. So it would have been really good for me. And I wanted to feed him a milk. But when that same Vamana, he took away everything from the Bali Maharaj and shackled him and put him into the jail, that same, same Ratnamala had a desire to kill that. So to fulfill that desire of 
Ratnamala, in the next life she became Bhutana. And she fed milk to Krishna, considering him as a son or pretending as a mother and tried to kill him. But vice versa, what happened? Krishna drank the milk also and sucked her life air also and she died. So when this pseudo gurus and our material mind troubles us to practice our devotional services, then when you pray to their Lordship, only He can take care of that. Otherwise, or with our own endeavor, it's not possible for him. So that is the pastime of killing Putana by Krishna. And that has happened in Gokul Mahavan. And this Khechri is the place where she used to sit. So from Khechri, when we start towards uh, Radha Kund, the next place comes Bahulavan. Bahulavan, the charming forest of Bahulavan is full of beauty. And according to Skanda Purana, Mathura Khanda, Shri Hari Sakhi Bahula resides here. Bahula Shri Hare Patni Tatra Tishthati Sarvada. This place is known, rightly known as a Bhati. And it lies seven miles west of Mathura between Radha Kund and Vrindavan. Sankarshan Kunda and Man Sarvara are the two Kundas in Bahulavan. There is another wonderful story also there about this particular place. That once there used to be one cow and her name was also Bahula. And she was grazing in the forest with other cows. Then suddenly what happened? One tiger attacked her. Then she started pleading to that tiger. See, I have a small calf. Just keep trust in me, faith in me, that I will go back to my place, I will feed my calf and come back. And then you eat me. I don't have any problem. So tiger, he kept faith in her. He said, okay, you go. But remember, if you don't come back, then I will come that place, I will eat you also, your calf also, and your caretaker. But Bola said, don't worry. I will come back, and you eat me only, and pacify your hunger. hunger. Then Bahula, she went to Goshala, when she came, her calf started running towards her. But she was in tears. She was crying. And she told her calf that now this is the last day for you to drink my milk. So, drink at your heart's content. And then, that uh, calf asked her, why you are saying like this, mother? Why it is last time? You are not going to feed me tomorrow? And she said, it's not possible tomorrow because today I have promised the tiger that I will come back and he will devour me. So today is the last day you should drink my milk and get satisfied. Then then calf said, if the tiger is going to eat you, then I will also come. Let him eat me also. If you are not there, then what is the use of, use of leaving me? So let me also die. And while this conversation was going on, their caretaker, that Gopal was also there. He looked at them. He said, no, no. Being I am your protector, if tiger has to kill you, then he should kill me first. If I die, then only he can kill you. So three of them, they went back to that tiger. And they stood in front of him. Tiger was in his uh, very ha happy mood because he was wanted to ha eat only one cow but now he got a tender calf and as well as a human being also. 
was very happy that day. And you are just contemplating, now from whom I should start? Should I eat first that Brahmana, that Gopal? Should I eat that uh, calf or should I eat this cow? Because everyone was asking, eat me, eat me, eat me. And same time, Lord Krishna, he was playing with his friends in that forest. And being a Paramatma, he came to know what's going on there. And immediately he rushed back. And when he entered that place, tiger, he looked at him and he said, See, being a carnivorous animal, these are my food. So I have to eat them. Otherwise, how I will quench my hunger? The Lord said, don't worry. And just he patted on his head. And tiger lost his cruelty. He became a devotee. And he just walked away from him. And then Lord, he rescued that cow, Babula. He rescued that calf and that Gopal also. And they became so happy, they started licking their Lordship's lotus feet. And the Lord also became happy because his, when his devotees are happy, he also becomes happy. So he said, from henceforth, this particular forest will be known as Bahulavan by your name. So this place is known as a Bahulavan. There they have a nice baitak of uh, Mahaprabhu, Vallabhacharya. From there when we walk further, there is another place which is known as a Viharvan. Viharvan is the place where Lord and his coward boyfriends, they used to play around. And now even today also that place is really beautiful. But it is, nobody stays there and lots of babul trees are there. But over all the year, the, that place is always green and shadowy. But because of it's too far from the road, nobody goes there. Very few Babajis who are really Bhajan and who wants to chant their rounds and do their Bhajan, they go and stay at that particular place. From Viharban, when we start further, then we reach at the place known as a Basanti. Basanti is the place where when Nanda Maharaj and all the coward boys, they left Gokul Mahavan because of the troubles from the various demons. And they wanted to go to Nandagam. So while going to Nandagam, they stopped at one particular place, which is known as a Chhatikara. And same time from Ravar, father of Radharani, Rishabhanu Baba, he also with all his Gopa friends, they also started, they wanted to also move from there and they wanted to go to Barsana. So they came and they halted at this particular place, which is known as a Basanti. So Radharani, she has performed almost all childhood pastimes in this place, in this particular place. When Radharani was staying in Basanti and Nandalala was staying at Chatikara, they used to come and meet at one particular place which is known as a Ral. It is just 5 kilometers away from Radhakund and near about 15 to 20 kilometers away from 15 kilometers away from Vrindavan. And it is considered to be as a meeting place of Radharani and Sri Krishna. There they have a nice uh, Balabhadra Kunda. Now it is full of uh, garbage. Some devotees they are trying to clean it up and rebuild it, renovate it. There they have a nice temple of uh, Radha Krishna and Dauji also. This particular place actually used to be considered a very interesting place for 
किशोर कैशोर लीला ऑफ दी देर लॉर्डशिप एंड श्रीमती आदा रैन इवन टूडे ऑल्सो दैट प्लेस इज इवर ग्रीन बट मोस्ट ऑफ दिवर्ट इज दे डोंट नो कि दिस पर्टिक्युलर प्लेस इज द प्लेस वेर लॉर्ड यूज टू परफॉर्म हिज इंटीमेट पास टाइम विद राधा रैन वेरी फ्यू पीपल नो अबाउट दिस then further when we walk then we reach at the place which is known as a mukhrai mukhrai is the place where radharani's grandmother used to stay the mother of mother kirtida and her name was mukhrai so on her name only that village is known as a mukhrai and that is just 1 km away from radha from here itself when you look towards on the north west side you will see a beautiful place which is known as radha kund that village itself is known as radha kund itself and this is the place which is known as the top most holiest place in the universe rupa goswami in his prayers in uh, upadesh amrut he glorifies that amongst the all vaikuntas the topmost is dwarka from the dwarka there is a another most auspicious place which is known as a rajamandal in the rajamandal the most auspicious place is mathura in mathura the most auspicious and holiest place is govardhan and in govardhan the most holiest place is shri radha because this radha kund is none other than the molten form of shrimati radha the water of radha kund is not different from shrimati radha and whoever takes bath he never remains same that's what rupa goswami says it is the highest and topmost place for the sadhana for all gaudiyas the followers of chaitanya mahaprabhu they reside on the bank of radha kund and perform their bhajan because every day their lordship they come and they perform their midday pastime in radha kund next to that is shamakund here you can see the first the dark border what you are seeing that kunda is known as a radha kund then you can see in between there is a bridge and next to that there is shamakund there is very wonderful story about appearance of both shamakunda and radha kund when they were staying at chatikara kansa sent one more demon who was known as a arishtasu and he was having a form of a bull and that bull was not that common he was a huge like a mountain and when he entered to vrindavan what did he did he was looking out for krishna where is he and he was not able to see krishna around there because krishna along with his friends he has taken his cows for grazing and he was not there in the village so he came up 
Krishna was so much engrossed in playing that he never paid attention to this person. And when he came, he got so angry that Arishta Sur, he started ailing like anything. And when he started ailing, then what happened? The cows who were pregnant, they miscarried. That was so horrible. And he started troubling all the devotees. Because he was knowing, if I have to get Krishna directly, then if I start troubling his devotees, then only he can come in the front. And that's why he started troubling all the Brajavasis there. When all the Brajavasis, they started crying for Krishna's help, Krishna appeared in front of Arishta. And he challenged him. Why you are troubling innocent people? If you think yourself heroic, then come and have a fight with me. And Arishta so looked at him, he said, he's such a small boy. And he's so puffed up that he's challenging me. So Arishta sir came runningly to just smash Krishna. But their lordship is their lordship. He just punched him on his head. Then Arishasu fell down there. Again he came into his consciousness. Again he came running and he wanted to smash Krishna. Then what he did? He just grabbed his horn and broke it. Then he grabbed his another horn, he reeled him around and smashed on the ground. And when that Arishna Sur fell on the ground, almost unconscious, with his another horn, he started beating him up. He, he beat him so much that Arishta Sur fell dead there. And this particular Leela happened in the afternoon. Then Krishna went, took bath in near Kundas, sat for a lunch. It happened in Vrindavan, before taking lunch, Krishna used to kill one demon. That was like a regular shadow. So this day, he killed Arishta, so sat there. Took a bath in the Kunda, sat with his friends, had a lunch, and evening he came back to his home. And that same night, he went to meet Srimati Radharani. But Radharani was very reluctant to meet him that day. She told him that you are a sinner because you have killed bull and you have done a go hatya so you should go and repent for this get done some prayas chitta krishna said for what no you have killed one uh, bull so you should go and repent for that but he said he was a demon. We don't know that. But he came in the form of a bull and you have killed a bull. So you have to repent for that. You have to get done prayashita. Then he said, what sort of prayashita should I do? Then Radhan told him, you go and take bath in all the holy places. After taking bath in all the holy places in the universe, you will get rid of this sin. Then Krishna he said, okay, if you desire so, then I have to take bath in all the deepness. So what he did, he just 
kicked in the earth with his hill and created one big pond. And he called up all the Tirthas in the universe. And they appeared. They appeared in front of him. And they said, yes, how I can serve you? And Krishna said, okay, all of you should enter in your water form in this particular kunda. And then that's become a Shama kunda. So all the holy places in this universe, they are present there in Shama Kunda. So once if you go there and take bath, then there is no need of going anywhere else to take bath. No need to go to Prayagraj, no need to go to Ganga Sagar. All the Ithas in the universe, from the, all the places, they have come there. So, When Krishna took bath there, again he looked at Radharani and he told her, Now all of you have to go and take bath in all the holy places. And they said, Why? Because even though I was sinless, you forced me to take bath in all the holy places, considering me as a sinner. Because you have considered me as a sinner, so all you have become a sinner. So to get rid of that, you also have to take bath in me, all the holy places. Then Radharani said, okay, we will also. Then all the Sakis, they took out their bangles, Kankana, and they started digging. And they formed a beautiful Kunda which is known as a Kankana Kunda. That's there in this Radha Kunda itself. When they did that, after finishing their Kunda, there was a, not a single drop of water. Then Krishna, he started teasing them. Oh, now you will reach, now you will wait for the next rainy season. When rain will fall, then all the water will come together and accumulate in this, and then you will take bath. Then Radharani and Vishaka, they got a little bit uneasy. And Lalita got angry. She said, no, 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 immediately we will going to get, fill it now. We have millions of our Sakis, and we will fill this Kunda right now. And all of this made a queue in a line, and they started bringing water from Manasi Sarovar and they started pouring it. All they got tired in that endeavor because it was not possible to fill up that. Then Krishna, he told all these rivers that, okay, go and help her out. So all the Kirthas, in their own form, with a folded hand, they appeared in front of Radharai. And they said, Hey Vrindavaneshwari, hey Vrindavaneshwari, we would like to serve you. Please give us a chance. Let us fill this kunda for you. Then Radharani looked at them and she said, okay, do so. Then all these Tirthas, they entered into Radha kund. So the water from Shamakund entered into the Radha kund and Radha kund got then Shivati Radharani with her Sakis very joyfully they entered into the water, took bath. Again they went to, into Shamakund, they entered there, they took bath there. Then Krishna, he also jumped into Radharani, he took bath there and after taking bath, he spoke to Radharani that this place will be known as the most auspicious place And whoever launch to advance in their spiritual life and desires to get my love, if they come here and take bath, they will get it. So even today, the serious devotee who want to really advance in their spiritual life, 
they go on the bank of Radha Kund, they sit there and they chant their rounds. They perform the chant. Tomorrow we will discuss the place surrounding the Radha Kund. There are wonderful places are surrounding the Radha Kund where our Acharyas have stayed and they perform their bhajan there so that they can advance, they can attain the real spiritual pleasure. Even today it is said who are really advanced in their spiritual life they can see their Lordship performing Jalakrida in Radha Kund in the noon time. There is one nice uh, stotra which is known as uh, Radha Krupa Gataksha Stotra. There Shivji himself he is telling about the glories of Radha Rani. There he says that whoever person goes to Radha Kund he stands in the water of Radha Kund up to the knee or navel or chest and read this particular Ashtaka uh, Krupa Kataksha Stotra which is known as Radha Krupa Kataksha Stotra that person really attains the mercy of Srimadhi Radha and you can find there are devotees specifically in the month of Kartik they go every day they stand in the waters of Radha Kund up to the neck and they chant 108 times. Some Shim devotees are there, they chant it for 1008 times. They sashtaka. That Krupa uh, Gadaksha Sotri is so wonderful. That explains about the beauty of Radha Rani, the mood of Radha Rani, how she is most important personality in the whole universe. And even all the Devi Goddesses, how they are the expansion of Srimati Radha Rani and how they desire to take shelter at the Radha Rani. So Radha Kundi is the place where one can achieve his perfection through chanting the holy names of the Lord. So thank you very much for your today's presence. Tomorrow we will discuss about the places around the Radha Kund. As there is a Radha Kund and Sham Kund, there are Ashra Sakhi Kundas. Lalita Sakhi has her own Kund, Vishaka Sakhi has her own Kund, Chitra Sakhi has her own Kund, Champaklata has her own Kund, Indulekha has her own Kund, Sudevi has her own Kund. Like this Ashta Sakis, they have their own Kundas. Same way, Dwadasha Gopalas, the associates of Lord Krishna, who are prominently known as the Dwadasha Gopalas, they are also having their own Kunda around Radha Kund. So we will discuss about that tomorrow. Then the pa few pastimes of our Acharyas who stayed there and how their Lordship has rendered service for them. That also explain, will explain and will discuss tomorrow about that. So this is the place where we can think about, meditate about, contemplate about the pastimes of the Lord which can purify your existence. And once our existence is, gets purified, and definitely we will get the love of God. So stay with us for tomorrow also. Then we can visit all these precious and glorious places of Raja. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna.